No, it's Carmen up against Corbin. Let's head into the match here uh, to see who plays against me for the final match. Uh, do you know anything about the Demir Mill versus Yogmoth matchup? I know you played Yog at uh, PT, uh, the Lord of the Rings, right? I did, yeah. So I have a lot of experience with with Yogmoth. I I don't know how many times I've played this matchup. Like, I think I've played it before, but certainly a number of times that I could count on my fingers. So I'm not like uh, an expert in it or anything. Um, but I think it can go either way. It's pretty scary from the Yogmoth side, especially in game one before you get access to endurance. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because neither you or Carmen are playing the one of main endurance. You know, that is one of the first cards I looked for, for my deck at least. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of more of a stock thing. I uh, just weren't feeling the endurance, or? Um, I think Carmen and I both settled on two in endurance in the sideboard. Uh, honestly, like, as the as modern progresses, the Yawgmoth deck just gets tighter and tighter. Like, there's so many cards that I wish I could play. When you think about, you know, you want to have tons of mana in your deck and all these sweet one ofs with Court of Calling, and then you'll play Eldritch Evolution. I actually used to play the One Ring in my Yogmoth deck. Um, a lot so, of them too, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> so anyway, just I guess modern has 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 reached that point where there's just so many good cards that you can't get everything you want uh, crammed into your deck all at once. Yeah, the best deck's so good right now. You can play any kind of combination and it's still categorized as the best deck, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's the case. <laughs> All right, so getting into the game here, we got a interesting situation here for Corbin down low, as that's a one lander. But Carmen is shuffling up her deck right now to find something. So those double archive traps are definitely going to have some text here. We could see archive trap, archive trap, and then something like surgical yogmoth. Uh, do you, wh whose position do you like more right now? I, I feel like it's it's pretty close here uh yeah great question i mean double archive trap that packs a punch that is one of the most potent cards the mill deck can have um and corbin is stuck on lands but actually kind of similarly to the game you and i just played if there's not a fast clock on the game that's not necessarily a death sentence because corbin can just wait a few turns every land that he draws represents three or six or 12 points of mill um, as you mentioned, he has surgical for whatever he determines to be the most scary card. Um, so I think it's anybody's game, but I like Corbin's position just because of the, the double archive trap turn. Okay, fair. So what would you identify if you were playing Demir Mill, which I feel like I've never seen you play a, Demir, a Mill deck, you know, uh, in my life, but if you were in this situation, what kind of threat would you think is number one? Is it just always Yogmoth? Uh, Yogmoth, let's I mean, say, drawing a bunch of cards is not that Yogmoth. good, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, actually, I think what, what Corbin is, is doing is the best use of surgical extraction of just holding it in your hand rather than guessing, right? Trying to predict ahead of time what's going to be scary. You can just hold it in your hand and use it to counter the activation of an Agatha Soul Cauldron or an Undying Trigger or something like that on a key turn. And, um, you know, this Soul Cauldron is going to be great. The, gra the graveyards are stocked for the whole rest of the game. But if if Corbin can just buy one extra turn off the Surgical, that's already, you know, a significant win for a zero mana card. Oh, totally. So here is Walking Ballista being Surgical. I would presume Agatha's Soul Cauldron is also targeting Ballista, but not for sure. Um, we'll see if this Agatha Soul Cauldron ability fizzles here. Yeah, uh, Corey, this of, is actually, yeah. can I can I tell you, this is um this is like a backdoor infinite combo. And Corbin, what happened to Corbin? Yeah, Did what happened maybe, there? He maybe misclicked. This is like a common uh magic online thing that can happen, which is when you surgical extraction, it doesn't automatically take the card out of the graveyard that you target. So you have to click actually, it again, huh? Yeah, you have to click it and confirm that you want to remove it from the graveyard. So unless you're used to that happening, you can, uh, you know, you can you can wind up missing it. But anyway, what we have here is an infinite combo because Young Wolf can ping itself, removing the <laughs> counter, come back with Undying, have another counter to activate as a Walking Ballista again. And 
normally that wouldn't accomplish anything. You're just spinning your wheels and resetting the game state. But with Zulaport Cutthroat, it is a backdoor infinite combo that Carmen has assembled here. So, um, I mean, oh. props to, to, to Carmen piecing together a win from a turn where she untapped with just two lands and a 1-1 one, one creature. Um, <laughs> and then also uh, a shame for, for Corbin that he seemed like he intended to remove the walking ballista from the graveyard but just didn't didn't actually execute it uh the way he wanted to yeah that is uh definitely a brutal scenario but i can honestly say i've never seen that combo uh go off from the yagmoth deck of just doing that off such little resources mm -hmm. and uh the walking ballista itself is not really a card that we see a ton of you know like you're not playing the ballista in your list right correct yeah so that's a great example of what we were talking about a moment ago there's so many cool one ofs that you can get a lot of mileage from in your Yawgmoth deck if you choose to to spend the slot on them, and yeah. Walking Ballista is just so good with with Agatha Soul Cauldron. Um, a lot of times you'll see players you can cord for zero, put the Ballista directly into your graveyard to set up one of those moves. Um, so yeah, I mean, it obviously pulled its weight there. Carmen didn't even have to draw it for it <laughs> to win the game. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. All the mill definitely doing the the heavy lifting here so far. Um, okay, so boarding here, what would you lean on uh, sideboarding here from the Yagma side? Definitely the Endurances makes a lot of sense as you want to target your own uh, library once it, or your own graveyard once you get stocked up. But any other slam dunks that you really want here? Um, sideboarding is tricky because it's, you know, it's, the removal is can be good against the crabs, but you also want to be proactive, get the game over with. Um, Endurance is the best card. You also see, like, Carmen's configuration right now is 64 cards, which could mean that she's thinking about what to cut, or it could just mean she wants 64 hit points against the mill deck, you know? that That's something that I've uh. done before. Um, I don't, I wouldn't go up to 75 because you want to maintain your qu card quality and your, you know, balance of lands and spells. But I think going up to like 63 cards is totally on the table. Yeah, I probably should have did that, to be honest, again, <laughs> against Corbin in the first round. Uh, that is that is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, the difference, Corey, is that your cards are all really, really bad and Carmen's cards are all really good. So it's a little bit easier to hey, justify. My creatures are gigantic, okay? <laughs> I mean, they are seven sevens. How can you call those bad? They just happen to cost eight and seven, you know? No big deal. <laughs> You're not a Gorios Vengeance lover, Reed? Actually, I think your deck's really, really cool. I, I just, you know, when, when we uh, we covered your match against Corbin, and man, that was just a roller coaster. I mean, I don't know how it felt from, from your seat, and uh, some of the viewers who, who have joined us since then might have missed it, but that was, like, so down to the wire, so cool to watch. Yeah, I did not think I was winning after that uh, hideaway land came into play and put me down to two cards. I'm like, well, all right, we'll have to fight back here. Uh, I think chat, 5% of people picked me to win. I figure I was about 5% to win from that point as well. Uh, the Excrepade Soul Guide Lantern Surgical deck is not very friendly to, uh, to my deck. That's for sure. Well, you did scrape it out and you lived yeah. to fight another day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Meanwhile, how do you see this game shaping up? We have another Yogmoth one lander. Another Yog one lander here. It, it works 100% of the time that I've seen it so far. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you just got to snap it off. Even if you miss the second land drop, it just doesn't. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a matchup where the Delighted Halfling is, is likely to survive, which is the good news. Yeah, there is a decent amount of removal, but how much removal does Corbin really want to keep in? You know, I mean, and it looks like there's a lot of excrepates, a lot of uh, that kind of action, that kind of game plan that Corbin's going for to just strip stuff from the graveyard plan. Um, mm -hmm. Do you like that against the Yogg deck or would you just want to try to deal with the battlefield uh, a little bit more? So it's a great question, Corey. I think... As a general commentary on modern, people mm -hmm. tend to overrate graveyard hate against against Yawgmoth. Like I think trying to fight the young wolves and Agatha Soul Cauldrons is is usually not a winning battle. But I think the difference here is that Corbin is really respecting the endurances out of Carmen's wow. sideboard. So while Soul Guide Lantern to exile a young wolf is kind of mopey and unimpressive. 
Soul Guide Lantern in response to Endurance can actually, you know, neutralize Carmen's very best card in the matchup. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Ton of sense. But as it stands, yeah, just kind of deploying little by threat, little by little here. And, you know, each fetch land that Corbin finds represents just 12 cards off the library. So a mini archive trap already. So I think Corbin here is just like, okay, give me fetch lands and give me Field of Ruins. Probably Field of Ruin ideally all day. Yeah, kind of cool that an extirpate could turn on Archive Trap if he wants. Oh, yeah. um, you know, we're probably not crazy far away from seeing the Shell Dock Isle turn on. So, um, uh, you know, if if Corbin has the time, which Carmen missing land drops does definitely buy him more time, he can probably assemble some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're able to extirpate, I mean, land here is a great draw. It's not a fetch land, so not ideal. But yeah, if you're able to extirpate and check out, you know, one of the problem cards, you know, I think I would probably start with whatever is, you know, possible to be cast next turn. So Grist um, would probably be the first card that I would go for. But then after you extirpate, you can save that other extirpate for whatever problem cards uh, in hand for Carmen and kind of just strip away some extra cards. But that endurance in hand is still going to be a bit of a problem. Okay, so responding to the Soul Guide Lantern here. A nice play. Now, what do you do to uh, the endurance from here? Like, there's no way to prevent those cards from going to the bottom of Carmen's deck, right? Correct. Corbin can't, I mean, the only thing he could do is extirpate his favorite one. So if he wants to say, I don't, I don't want to worry about Yawgmoth or Grist or Court of Calling for the rest of the game, he can do that uh, and then let the Endurance resolve and then use Archive Trap afterwards. Um, but this is definitely going to put, you know, looks like 14 cards back into, into Carmen's library helpful so extirpate on yogmoth no more thran physicians gonna be put into play this turn you're not able to set egg up the soul cauldron them anything like that um so now it is just plan a is just attacking um you know, good old fair magic from carmen to deal with corbin's life total an interesting thing here is carmen could go for court of calling while the endurance is on the stack it okay. Turns out from our perspective that it's going to work really nicely for Corbin because he has this spell pierce that that's uh, burning a hole in his pocket. Yeah. Um, but, you know, really cool play from Carmen. And this is this is one of the fun things about endurance in the deck is kind of using it as to power out Court of Calling at a key moment. Absolutely. There's just so much play to this deck. And you get a Court of Calling back into your deck at least here. So a little bit of a free spell when it counts, comes down to actually milling out Carmen here. Oh, and look, the Endurance is back in the library, too. Yeah, normally uh, you stack it the other way, right? I think when we've <laughs> all played, you know, a ton of Rakdos Evoke, you know, preparing for uh, the Pro Tour in Barcelona and stuff, it's just like, you don't even ask anymore. You're like, of course I'm stacking the Evoke in the back and the ability in the front, but in this situation, it actually is much better to do it in the opposite. So I wonder then if, if uh, Corbin may have preferred to extirpate the endurance i mean if if you anticipate that that's the way it's gonna it's gonna play out yeah you would think that is that is definitely interesting so talking ballista for one could deal with hedron crab right now i like that i mean the crabs just add up to so many cards so quickly when you get them in multiple and now you know corbin's hand sure a couple of traps are nice and stuff but you know they're kind of mopey in the sense that if even if you double archive trap carmen here and then Carmen ever just finds Court of Calling or Endurance, you know, you're just in a lot of trouble. Yeah, some interesting developments. Uh, remember that the Walking Ballista for one, that was known from Corbin's yep. perspective. He had extirpated the previous turn. So he he elected, you know, that he he was okay making that block and forcing Carmen to cash in the Ballista, use, use her mana in that way. Um, Corbin also had the opportunity he could have let the whole uh, stack resolve, including the endurance, and then afterwards used his archive trap because he had searched. Um, oh wait, is there a difference between 
your opponent searching their library and you searching your opponent's library? I actually it, am now at second guessing myself. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure either. Um, I was really leaning on you for that one. I, I was just assuming. <laughs> All right. let's, read, let's read the fine print here. If an opponent searched their library this turn, yes. you may pay zero rather than pay archive traps mana cost. And extirpate says, you search its owner's graveyard hand and library. So, the, you know, if I had my attorney here, we would know for sure, but I would interpret that that archive trap is not turned on by extirpate. Okay, that would make sense to me. And uh, I guess the attorney here is just Twitch chat. So you, really, <laughs> you really don't know. It could be right or wrong on that one. Yes, Twitch chat represents me in court regularly. So, Oh, man, you are going to jail. <laughs> you are going to jail for sure if that's your lawyer. <laughs> All right, so Ashiok targets Carmen to get rid of four cards but now on the battlefield there is just four damage that can come back to ashiok ashiok seems great if you have some crabs to you know defend yourself behind but definitely doesn't look as good um right now yeah i mean even if you get 13 each for these traps you know 30 oh 13 26 right 39 i mean okay never mind i uh <laughs> i guess a field of ruin just wins the game right now that is interesting oh, oh my god, god Corey, you called it the caster call i'm on fire let's go that's a birthday call if i've ever seen one <laughs> no doubt wow, wow. <laughs> looks like we're going to game three here reed yeah now there's there's nothing right there's no winning yeah. at instant speed there's no flashback cards Reed, is I this the this equivalent of like asking your opponent, like, oh, what are you at? One? Okay, gut shot you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Triple archive trap from the top Unreal. ring. Top row tier. <laughs> this game did not look like it was going to be going to Corbin here. Uh, but wow, that was really impressive. So I guess Field of Ruin definitely has a different template than I search your library. Field of Ruin is you have to search your own library and that's the difference. yeah that's fun fact that's a the functional difference between field of ruin and the new demolition field is field of ruin is not optional yeah so it's, uh, okay slightly better especially in a case case of a deck like archive trap getting miles better in, in space for sure so any changes you'd make from the demir mill side do you want to keep all these extra paids do you want all these surgicals or do you mm. want like fatal pushes to deal with creature i i mean like especially when i play against uh, Yog from basically any deck, and you probably saw it, you know, whenever I could. I, I was just always trying to get permanence off the battlefield because, you know, the Yogmoth deck just snowballs if if I allow you to, you know, untap and you can play a creature and court against me where I could have prevented it by dealing with your creatures proactively. I, I feel like I kick myself because of it. Is, is that something you want to do against Yog? is just try to kill every creature or does Demir Mill not fit that mold? I think I'm I'm on the same page as you in terms of I, I would want the removal spells. Um but Corbin's, you know, he's got a lot of pressure on his on his slots. He wants to maintain a balanced configuration. He wants to have enough graveyard hate that he can fight through the endurances. Um so I like what he did where he kind of mixed and matched. I think he he had like two soul guides and some number of surgicals, but he didn't just blindly put in every single graveyard hate card. That seems right to me. So starting it off with a blue land that I have no idea what it is, but it casts preordained here before any possibility of bowmasters. Uh, and then a couple surgicals with a hedron crab to start getting uh the mill going with these three fetch lands. Uh, but on the flip side, Carmen has just a very good hand, plus she has the card that seems just so incredible here with the Okay, I think Corbin's card is a one of the alternate names for um, Oboro Palace in the Clouds. That's the one where you can... Oh, there it is. Buckleberry Fairy. Of course, um, Buckleberry Fairy. I mean, you yeah. should have known that, huh? So this you can return <laughs> to your, your hand uh, every turn if you just need a land drop for your Hedron Crabs and Ruin Crabs. Uh, That's pretty cool. A little aspect of this. So double Endurance in hand. It's going to be interesting. 
how Corbin's able to maneuver this here. You got to think just endurance is the best card and having both of them in your 75 has to be huge. Carmen. Yeah. So I think Corbin's goal and it's, you know, he doesn't know what's in Carmen's hand, of course, but from our perspective, the best way this can go for Corbin is if he sets up a scenario like what happened in game two, where mm -hmm. Carmen's going to endurance, you know, for a big, a big, a graveyard and stack it, stack the triggers such that endurance goes to the graveyard and then goes to the bottom. And yeah. if Corbin can time it just right and surgical the endurance before the trigger resolves, then he'll get both of them for one shot. And then uh -huh. he's free to start working, working on the library. So this surgical resolved, interestingly enough, you know, Carmen did have the option to endurance pitch the grist that was already going away and endurance herself there. You're not tempted to do that at all. If you're already going to lose the card. Mm, it's a great question. I mean, you definitely bring up a, a cool play. I'm not sure I would have, uh, you know, thought of it on the, on the fly there. Yeah, like if you're already going to lose it, you know, you can play one. But now Corbin has the most important thing here, which is just perfect information, knowing that there's two endurances to play around. And uh, at least Tasha's hideous laughter exiles the card. So that's one of those mill spells that you can play proactively and not really worry about endurance hitting. Um, and, you know, some decks it's going to mill like 30 cards. This is probably somewhere around the 2015 range. Um, as there is a decent amount of four drops, but still seems pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Um, we might actually see Carmen just cast those endurances and start beating down. Um, you know, we think of them as like a hate card or like a, you know, you you reset when you're about to die. But in this case, you can kind of think of them as like a siege rhino or something. <laughs> where it's like, you know, a hard-hitting creature that comes down and you gain yourself a little bit of, you know, quote-unquote life. It's like, okay, you know, I, I got a 3-4 creature and I added 10 cards to my library. What are you going to do about it? You heard it here first. Reed Duke, Endurance is the 2024 Seed Rhino here. Uh, I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, happier times. Happier times when Modern was uh, filled with Seed Rhinos, huh? You definitely played throughout that era. Yeah, you remember that when people people played a Siege Rhino at, at the Modern Pro Tour? Now it's oh, like yeah. you'd, you'd get laughed out of the building. That thing and could not, be three mana and it still would be sketchy. Not only played it, like it was making top eights. I think I just saw that on the Will Hall experience. I, it was the Jesse Hampton, you know, Seth was in there, Efro. There was a lot of Siege Rhinos in that top eight as well. I don't know exactly what Modern Pro Tour that was, but. Yeah, I'm actually, one, of, not too long one ago. of the most busted periods in modern was when Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time were were not yet banned, okay. and the two big decks were like, you know, Delver with Treasure Cruise and every you know crazy cantrip, and the other deck was like, "Well, I'm just gonna cast a Siege Rhino." <laughs> that was deal cool with it. <laughs> Look how yeah, now I think you would get lapped out the building if you cast a Siege Rhino. Uh, and then and then your opponent's just like, okay, discard a Traxa, bring it back. Solitude your Rhino. It's like, all right, I'll head out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here is the Tasha's Hideous Laughter on the stack. Do you go for Endurance here at any point, or do you think about courting for, I guess you can cord for three here, but I feel like you have all the three drops in hand you want, huh? Um, I expect I would... Probably just let this go and then end of turn cast endurance as a three four. Um, Carmen is is thinking about access to any sweet one ofs um, that she might lose if they get exiled to the to the hideous laughter. Sure. So, for instance, you know, do you want to get your blood artist and then know that you can combo later? Um, Apatra, maybe. Yeah, what's what's gonna what's gonna come out for X's two here? Basically, that's how me and Corbin were commentating you and Carmen's match. There's just so many things going on that I'm like, yeah, they could do one of 146 different things. So I'm just gonna let them do it, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so this scavenging ooze can 
manage graveyard sizes and it can just become like an 8 8. Um, so that's definitely a fine way to approach things. Hold on to the endurances for as long as possible. Makes sense. Yeah, now the clock is not extremely fast from Carmen's side. It, it, it's there. Um, but every single creature that gets munched from scavenging ooze is another creature that is not in Carmen's library. Um, so that's a big thing. And we see the double crowd plus double fetch land. I mean, a lot of cards going away with these properly timed endurances. It looks pretty scary and, and difficult for Corbin to deal with here. And then another thing is if Corbin were to find, you know, drown in the locks or something like that, you know, all of a sudden Carmen's patience could backfire. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, once again, you know, if Corbin can somehow get this surgical extraction to to line up in his favor, um, he could still win this game, though just at face value, it looks like it's going to be tough um, in the face of, you know, pretty significant clock and, and endurance reshuffling the, the graveyard. Yep, I have to agree. The one thing I guess surgical could do uh, is just surgical the cords just because there's three of them in the yard and that's three less cards that go to the bottom, but that doesn't seem like the best plan. All right, Corey. So for, for viewers who came in late, um, we are in, this is the fourth match of the evening, the loser's bracket. And it, things actually broke kind of nicely because Carmen and I had had a duplicate. We both played Yawgmoth. Mm -hmm. But now with this match, we've gotten to see every every matchup uh, of, across the evening. And then yep. you are waiting in the one in one bracket to face the winner of this. And you're basically going to get a rematch of a match that you played previously. So yeah. how do you feel about those prospects? And, and do you feel like you have a, a better or worse matchup against one or the other of these players? You know, as a horrible as Demir Mills seems on paper, it's not actually always as bad. There's definitely still some play to it. I get to rely on Grief Ephemerate as kind of plan A and then just kind of, you know, try to run over Corbin. Or, like, if he has one of these Excrepate Surgical, you know, Soul Guide Lantern, the type of draws where I just have no way of actually doing the Gorios Vengeance thing. And if he doesn't have those kind of draws... You know, you do still have the ability to play Teferi, which is an amazing card, both against Yogg and Demir Mill. Demir Mill just really can't do much about it. And if I force Corbin to use his Surgicals and Excrepates proactively instead of uh, reacting to me, then these cards are not only extremely good against me, but they're not also counter spells. So hmm. all that being said, I would still rather play against Yogg, but I don't think the the Mill matchup is like, you know, 95-5 like it seems on paper. Um, but I, I do like the Yogg-Moth matchup. Play draw is very important. Um, but yeah, either way, I think I, I'm slightly disadvantaged, but we'll see. Well, that's cool that you've you've thought a lot about the matchup and, and have a plan for it. I was saying how much I enjoyed kind of you guys playing a matchup that's not what what we expected or that either of you had probably, you know, pre prepared for explicitly. Um, just watching watching strong players like learn on the fly is always really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Modern's at a really fun place right now, especially with the the dampening of, you know, Teamer Rhinos, Four Color Rhinos, um, that deck's power level going down a bit, I, I think is really going to open the door for some things. Yawgmoth, I think, will probably be the top contender, wouldn't you think? I think, you know, d you know day one of the banning, that's, that's probably where most people are going to, is, okay, this deck was one of the best decks already, it wasn't touched by the bannings and it's it's tough matchup got hit so yeah i mean it's it's no uh no great leap to think that yogmoth's going to be a really really strong deck so getting back into the game here yogmoth off the top is an excellent pickup here for carmen are you just like very proactively trying to deal with probably hedron crab to start since you have to sack less creatures yeah, so um, you get to force Carmen into, or sorry, you get to force Corbin into an unfavorable block. So um, you have to block here, right? Otherwise, it's lethal. 
Yeah, exactly. So so Corbin has to lose one of the crabs, and then you could maybe kill the other with any combination of Yogmoth's two abilities. Um, also, just holding up the endurance looks to be you know leave leave Carmen in a very safe position. So there's really no downside here. There's no bad outcome. And now here's the thing. Do you sack polluted Delta or not? I guess we are. Um, I like sacking it and just hoping that you like, what, top deck drown on the lock so you could counter this endurance. But even the flip side of that, I don't think there's been a land played so far. So if Carmen wants to, you know, post-combat, he could just sack some creatures, try to find land three, play endurance proactively. And that just seems like it would lock it all up here. So either way, Corbin's in a rough spot. Oh, I see what you mean, Corey. So while the wall of roots is has already, is, been, has active, already yeah. been used and turned off, that's yeah, that's super cool. That's that's interesting to think about. But all Carmen has to find is either untapped land. So as long as she's not top decking a bunch of blooming marshes or something, or you know, has to fade just a green card as well. So a lot of outs uh, for Carmen if if we do go for that. You know what would be excellent here is if Corbin did have one of these surgical excrepate turns where he could mill over the case endurance and then excrepate it here, but much luck. Hit it anyway. So what can happen here for Corbin? I'm trying to think like he's he doesn't quite have the um visions of beyond type stuff turned on. So I, I don't know how he gets access to to multiple cards here. I mean, maybe if he draws Tasha's hideous laughter and hits well, that's the card you mentioned, Corey. Drown in the lock to counter endurance. Does counter endurance, but six is not ten. We can double check my math on that, but uh I think it's just gonna be. You know, this crab, if it can jump in front of scavenging ooze, but I'm still seeing five damage in the other way. Like, you need to drown in the lock to both kill scavenging ooze and counter endurance. It's just not there. I think it, uh, it's going to be Carmen winning this match to uh, come play me next round. Oh, wild games. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, game two with the triple archive trap, that was... Uh... Corbin had his moment, right? That's the, that's what, why you bring Mill is is to have a, a kill like that. And to his credit, I mean, he brought a uh, like a really bold deck choice and made it close in in yeah. you know, both his matches. I mean, game two was basically summed up to like, yeah, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the deck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. Straight, perfect. Perfect 39 cards there. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, so here's the attack, and that is just a lethal amount here. Now, I mean, the Drown in the Lock goes on the stack to kill Endurance, but in response, you can just Endurance and uh, hit your own library, right? And then yes. this counters that. So, oh, you're right, you're right. Okay, so... The Drown Lock's going to fizzle, and that will result in uh, lethal combat damage. Very cool. Eat. I wasn't sure if it fizzled or not, but yeah, it doesn't check last known information kind of thing, right? <laughs> and that's going to be it. That's Carmen advancing here to play one more match after losing a super close one to you round one. Uh, to try to make it into the winner's bracket. And, you know, it makes it a lot easier uh, in this really awesome event when you when you win the first week you know not having to win two weeks in a row uh is a is a really big deal wouldn't you think